good morning, you know. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We are excited to be here. It's just me, Monday. This is why you look at me. So I said, we are happy. Because five minutes ago, I don't know. This energy was not there. Five minutes ago, it was not present. <laughs> <laughs> but while Catherine is carried away, happy Easter, everybody, and welcome to a Catch Up Monday on Jasiri. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for choosing to join us on a Monday morning where many of you are in your homes, probably still in your pajamas, <laughs> while we're here working. I can't remember the last time I had a public holiday I in know. such a long it's time. Here. Well, we hope you're enjoying the holiday with your family, friends, and maybe a plate of jollof rice or something deliciously huh. spicy mm. or what. Aww. Should we not oh. talk about food? Uh -uh. Ah. Anyway, before I get too carried away with the festivities, let's check in and see how everyone else is celebrating. Ladies, how was Easter? Mm -hmm. Blessings, I'm not even going to ask. Ah. You, look, you look moody or Christ? moopy or moopy <laughs> or whatever it is. They say Christ is risen, but it was a challenge rising from Christ. <laughs> Christ was risen yesterday. I was it not rise today? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you? Sometimes you sit up. Remember that picture of it's like a, a cartoon or a drawing of a black woman who who sitting up in bed and she's like this. You sit up and you're contemplating your yes. life and you're like, how did I arrive at a place in my life that I'm working on a public holiday? <laughs> and then you be asking, do I really need this job? Do you know I really no, need this no. job? I really and people are asking because they can't quite get it. Are you seriously working on public holiday? How does that? You know, now it's like, make it make sense. Do you know the funny okay. thing is, I now always forget that there's a public holiday. Yeah. So sometimes I'm like, why the roads me? And then they tell me, and I get so angry. Like, really, you guys are not going to work, really. <laughs> and then you're, you're the only it's one. It's when I leave my compound and I see all the cars parked. I'm like, wow, everybody is still at home <laughs> yes. except me. Yes. And no, 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 no. That is because, that is the nature of the work that we do. Um, that's when I want to become a stay-at-home wife. <laughs> But I'll drive no, both. You I'll, I'm not the type. No, I'm not. Well, I'll, I'll drive both of us crazy. I, I, mean, I would like to continue this job, but I would like to be a stay home correspondent. But, anyways, amid all the Easter celebrations, yeah. I stumbled upon a very powerful message this morning. Um, it really resonated with me, and it said, you can't wait until life isn't hard anymore to be happy. Isn't that true, ladies? Yep. I mean, we often think that happiness is something we find once all our problems disappear. But the reality is, life will always throw us curveballs. Mm -hmm. It's how we choose to face those challenges that determine our happiness. You know, we always make jokes about um, problem will be finished. Yes, so. <laughs> you have poor man problem. Then when you become rich, you have rich man problem. You know, there's, just, there's just always something. There's, put, there's, there's songs even written about it. Problem, you know, the Wahala problem, call it what yeah. you will. And Biggie but, did it for us now. More money, more problems. More but money, you know, I, I think particularly this message is for a lot of women out there. And I'll say this because we often put other people's happiness before, before our own. Yeah. Our, before our own. Wow. Mm -hmm. Before our own. <laughs> <laughs> our spouse, our children, our family, our friends, sometimes our friends, our, our, our yeah. in laws. Yes, yes. And we, things are just happening. I was talking to our producer last week. And I'm like, if you're not careful, particularly in this Lagos and as a woman, if you're not very outgoing often, yeah. you'll find out that. Three months will go by, and you haven't gone out for yourself. Yes. yes. It's church, Easy home, indeed. work, yeah. family things. Before you know it, that's maybe one-on-one -on -one time with your girlfriends, a movie here, just strolling them all there. It's gone. You haven't done it, and life is passing you by. Yeah. So, ladies, I'm challenging you. This is not just about, you know, finding happiness with our family and mm. with our loved ones. Find mm. happiness. What are the things you like to do? I remember yeah. with radio, I finished, like, one. I'm in the movie theater. I'm the yes. only person. And I love it. Once yeah. a week. I, I love loved it. it. Yeah. I would buy popcorn, yeah. watch all the latest movies yeah. from there, go yeah. and pick up my daughter. Now I do it with like clothes. I think blessings you can agree. You'll find out you're keeping these outfits for yeah, I need to change my hair. Yeah. Or this. Oh no, today is not that kind of yeah. day. Wear it. Wear it. Because do the make make guys. Up. Change yeah. your yeah. hair. Go with the flow. Let's stop Tell boxing you. up yeah. everything. And yeah. the truth is that we should recognize that happiness isn't about having a perfect life. No. Yeah. It's about finding joy in those imperfect moments. Yeah. Yes. Be grateful for what you have, guys. It's about finding peace amidst yeah. the troubles, the chaos. Appreciate the blessings, big or small. Just take life parcel by parcel, step by step, yeah. little by little. Waka small, small, just enjoy it. <laughs> there, there, there really is never Stop a perfect planning. life. There's a book I'm reading, and I, I really love that book because it's an unconventional way of seeing life. You know, mm. it says, and, and it reminds me of when we were in secondary school. They say, read now so that you won't have to read again. I'm, no, reading, no. I'm still learning, I'm still writing yeah, exams, bro. you know. So, like, 
the, the earlier you accepted that every day comes with its own challenges mm. and it's the way you choose to interpret it that will determine how best you maximize your life, the better for all of us. So I think that we need to get rid of that mindset that, oh, there's one perfection that everybody mm. has to attain. Even people that live happily ever after, it's because the movie ends there. The real life doesn't end there. The movie doesn't end there. One way or other, you, you, you would read romance novels and, huh, hmm, huh, and they live happily ever after. It's mm. because the book finished. <laughs> it's because the book, I love yeah. that. It's because the book finished. As in, buy the ice cream. Yeah. I, I'm just going to come back to it. I'm telling you, live your life before you know it. Do we always have passed yeah. through. Right. I think we also struggle. People like to do things in pairs, not yeah. alone. Yeah. We struggle yeah. to do things alone. by ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, what, what Tolu said really resonates. Because when I, I remember when I started working, and I was like, I would work so hard and save so hard. You know, I was always working and saving. And before you know, I'm spending the money for some emergencies that I didn't plan. Yeah. And then I'm like, I, I never buy things for myself. I never even go to maybe, you know, an eatery and just enjoy. Mm -hmm. I'm always just saving, saving. And then I'm like, yeah. where's the money? It got worse when I got a car. Because mm -hmm. mechanic will just come to yeah. say, you know, you're in this sound, you pay for this sound. <laughs> and then you're realizing that, wait, this money, no, no, if no, I no. just mm -hmm. used it to, you know, take myself out, yeah. buy myself things. Now, <laughs> Valentine's Day, I buy myself a gift. And On a Monday that out. I don't, today now, I'll go and buy myself a gift. Yes. I'm not feeling good. I, I need to pamper myself. So in front of you, you, you yeah. just <laughs> indulge yourself. Say, you know how you talk to me? Because, listen, guys. We talk to ourselves a lot in this Lego. When somebody is working on it, we're talking to themselves, just encouraging themselves, say, oh, die, not die. This fact, thing, I'm going to buy it for myself. Nothing ain't yeah. going to happen. They're not talking to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is in their ears. All right, so as we take this break, ladies, let's raise our Jasiri mugs. Here we so go. So this is to embracing life, yeah. to living a life that, even with its ups and downs, puts a smile on ups our face with down. hearts full of gratitude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cheers, 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 Happy cheers, Easter, guys. everybody. We're going to take a quick time out, and we hope that your day is going to be filled with love, laughter, and plenty of life's goodies. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Just Siri on an Easter Monday. All right, so let's catch up on what went down during the weekend. Our first story is about President Bola Tinubu's recent appeal to religious leaders. He is urging them not to curse Nigeria in the sermons, even if they disagree with the leadership, emphasizing the importance of constructive criticism and maintaining a positive outlook. Let's hear from the horse's mouth. Of togetherness. Various religious leaders, the Christian, the Islamic leaders getting together to share a meal, to extend the spirit of togetherness, to show understanding of our nation, of our culture, the diversity the richness, the courage of the nation. That's what you are. Okay. okay. Uh, an interesting perspective, guys. What do you think? So, I'm thinking. Religious leaders shouldn't express their criticism or they shouldn't... Are you now saying that they should uh, speak from both sides hey. of their mouth, like they say, or they should just pretend, close your eye and pretend like these things are not happening because you don't want them to make it look like Nigeria is looking bad. Not use your mouth, cause the country. All of us at one point or the other have said something negative. One, one country. Forget. Yeah. Or at some point or the other. Nigeria, no, they, I, it doesn't come to me immediately, but we all have... It came to me. It came to me. We, we, we've all said, I, I know I've said it. So I don't understand, guys, me not be like, say, only Catherine that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that um, he needs to stop making it look like we are just looking for negative things to say. 
we're yeah. only giving constructive criticism, like what we see happening. We're urging Various. the government, and not just the government Religious now, you know, so for a better Nigeria, for a better country at large. So the yes. fact that we're pointing out things that are not working does not mean that Get we're criticizing together. the government, except, of course, me. they have something to hide, except, of course, there's a reason Various. why they would not want to work on the nation. So I don't understand this particular message, though. If we see something, you say something. That's what we've always advocated for. And now you're saying that, oh, <laughs> leaders should just come together and share a meal. No, no. You, so I, I had to look because how this is being reported across um, different platforms is that he said that they should not curse Nigeria. They should not lay curses on Nigeria, but that they can, of course, give constructive criticism to government officials and that they should remember their significant role in shaping public opinion and promoting unity in the country. He says, of course, that his government is uh, determined to uh, address Nigeria's challenges. So I think there is a clear line. There's a difference between cursing Nigeria yeah. and giving constructive criticism. Yeah. But I also think at a point in time, these are not the things you need to address as president. I, I don't know. Because mm. it feels like you are listening to every dog that barks. Yeah. You are, if your government is performing, mm. people will say you're performing. Yeah. If things are being addressed, you're being addressed. It, it feels sort of like a, almost like a petty anti way of saying, don't talk too much. And we also yeah. need to understand, we're in a country where, unfortunately at times, we're not even sure which side of the divide our religious leaders are on. True. Are they mm -hmm. on the people, the yeah. majority of the people's side? Are they on their own side? Are they in the Lord's army? Because I'll, uh, uh, <laughs> I'll start singing that song now. Uh, uh, or, or, or are they uh, what? Uh, so uh, yeah. you have a situation where many Nigerians are dissatisfied, they're disillusioned, not just with how government is affecting their lives, but even with religion as it yeah. is, our religious leaders themselves find themselves under a lot of spotlights and criticism. We can't even ignore that as yeah. well. And now you have the president coming, don't lay curses. The curse part, I wholeheartedly agree. The criticism part, it depends on how you hear criticism. Are you hearing it as criticism or are you hearing it as curse? As an affront. Yes. Yeah. Because I was, the moment you were talking yeah. about, I was thinking, what's the difference really between critici constructive criticism and curses? You know, you tell somebody they're mad. Is it a curse or is it a criticism or is it a... You it know, is in a Niger curse, no, in Niger, How no. is you the really? mad, not a curse? But don't uh, just let anybody uh, say, well, say it on the street. It's become the new normal on the street. The the you know, where, where is the criticism? You know? Where is the constructive criticism? No, that's what I'm saying. How do we hear it in Niger? So why is it that we've never really heard the constructive criticism that led to the curses? Right? Let's even say that we're cursing Nigeria. I mean... Nigerians have tried to point out things that are not working. You're not listening. And then it has gotten to the point where they now have to say some things. And to be honest, I don't even think the government needs to concern itself with what Nigerians are saying. Well, you concern yourself with, with working. Governance. Because if, I mean, if things are not working, you cannot dictate how I feel about it. Eh, you can dictate again, what you're going to do, what eh, the solution is, but you cannot dictate what my emotions will be towards what's not working. Then again, it's Easter. In the spirit of Easter, something has to be said. Well, it's uh, okay as we celebrate the Lord's uh, <laughs> arising, arising Aris? from the, uh, from the, huh? So he so says, let's, he, he goes further and says that instead of cursing Nigeria, we should, should make sure that bad leaders are shown the exit during elections. Yeah. It's just a really interesting it's, dynamic, yeah. knowing all the things that have, all the controversies and scandals that have, uh, you know, surrounded his particular election. He said, yes, this leader is bad, fine. Wait until the next election to change him, but do not condemn your country. Which ah, I understand. What's the saying? What's that saying? My, my that pigeon is bad. Nah. What's the saying? Soldier come, soldier, soldier go. Now back to me. Government come, government go. Administration will come, will pass. Presidents will come, will pass. The only thing that'll be here, whether it's standing, crawling on his knees, is it's Nigeria. Us. No, but that's convenient though, because now you're saying that we should just overlook your administration and wait till the next one. <laughs> and then, because we all know the um, the the. Uh, uh, Implications. Shenanigans mm. uh, that go on during elections and all that. And you know, I think that was really low. You know that, okay, you say, wait till the next government. The next government comes out. Say, there's wait always till controversy the next during <laughs> elections. And, you know, there's also purported allegations of here and there. Um, things are, are being manipulated and all that. So, you know, we know that there's always that. But I, I really think that in itself is in bad taste. Nah, man, mm -mm, you shouldn't have gone there to say, okay, wait till the next elections. Because it, it really, elections are a really sensitive part of yeah. us. And we, we really, we take it, the past um, elections that have happened in the country, you've seen Nigerians become more involved, more even emotionally involved as well, because everybody wants to see a change. And yeah. we keep saying the change starts with us. And then it, you lose a tooth. 
you, you, know, you make us feel as if... It's tough. It's really tough. <laughs> it <laughs> is tough. <laughs> <good. laughs> but, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I also put a spotlight. So no. the president has religious leaders breaking bread with him after fast or after the day's fast or whatnot. And people think about the relationship between religion and governance. And there are so many people, uh, I think it was Karl Marx, that says that religion is the opium of the people. And there's so many Nigerian leaders and politicians who use religion as a tool, sure. who yeah. use religion as a dividing stick, who use religion as some kind of um, whatever they want, whatever it's you, in whatever way it's useful to them, they will use religion. Yeah. And so you're thinking, OK, well, here we go. We have the president saying, you know, you guys should not curse us. Just, you know, give us constru constructive criticism. That's how he's using. That's how he wants to use religion in regards to this. But again, he and one point he makes. They, their impact is far, and it goes very, very far. Yeah. There is a responsibility when you're on that pulpit, when you are yeah. the preacher, the pastor, the imam, uh, the uh, ustaz, whatever you may be, even the traditional priest, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. it is. There is a responsibility. I don't know how they're going to bear it in a country right now where the majority of us are unhappy, yeah. disillusioned, Nigerians are getting poor, food is getting more expensive. I do expect to see a religious leader, my religious leader on the pulpit, speaking truth to power. Yes. That's what I expect. Yeah. And I hope that there are many, and I, I do hear that there are some. I'm not anti-religious. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, I told you, me and I'm God, just, we're, no, we're exactly. still working out our conversation, yeah. Noah. But I do want to see more Nigerian religious leaders speak truth to power, damning the consequences and damning who is on uh, who is president, yeah, be it your tribesman, yeah, your religious, good, uh, yeah. whatever it is. And yep. because a lot of religious leaders over time have been compromised, let's be honest, that's why a lot of people will see this message as a subtle either threat like or a reminder. Warning. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, remember, you know, yeah. we get ourselves, or don't talk anyhow. So it, it, to a lot of Nigerians like myself, it feels like he's talking to the people that the religious leaders that are in his corner. Because you cannot be telling, it really, the, she just said, damn the yeah. consequences. You cannot be telling me what to say. If, if I have influence over the people, then I, sh I owe them the truth. Mm -hmm. So for you to stand there and tell me what to say, what not to say, is because you, you have yeah, it in your pockets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's either a threat or a reminder or both. <laughs> it's all. It's all of the above. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next story. Um, we'll take a break now. Um, probably. No, no break. They want us to continue. Okay, so uh, don't forget, we are streaming live on social media platforms. We are at New Central TV. And please use the hashtag just Siri to be a part of the conversation so we know that you are watching. Our next catch-up is on a story hmm. that has been trending for ha. some time now. Shioma Okoli, hmm. a 39-year-old entrepreneur, is facing the possibility of jail time. And this is getting more and more real. Hmm. A lot of people feel like, nah, it's not possible. But <laughs> we're looking at it happening over an online review of tomato puree. Now, the story began when Choma posted a negative review, as many Nigerians would, of a popular brand of tomato puree on a social media platform. She expressed her dissatisfaction with the product's quality and shared her experience with other consumers. However, instead of addressing her concerns, the company behind the product decided to take legal action against her. They accused her of defamation and spreading false information about their products. Let's take a look. So there is... And she first did the, um, the review. Mm -hmm. It was just that first post, <clears throat> right? Then apparently, I think it's the brother to, um, it's the sister, sister to the yeah. owner of uh, the food company, Rascal, yeah. that's mentioned, that came to her timeline and replied her. And the sister, I'm trying to quickly get what the sister said. And, and the sister replied her on her Facebook timeline um, and said, stop spoiling my, pro my brother's product. If you don't like it, use another one than to bring it onto social media or call the customer service line of the company. So then um, she said, we don't use sugar. We actually use honey in our product. And that's what we use. And please, we've moved past this. Let's all do the same. Uh, apparently, there is some reply to her that, um, and help me advise your brother to stop killing people, people. with his products. And I think that's the particular line now that seems to have gone her in trouble because we all review yeah. this day and age you cannot yeah. stop anybody from but reviewing people even anything make money of from critiquing product yes I, I think this was a pr crisis that was absolutely mismanaged an opportunity was lost to show what your product is about An take your product to a lab right. yeah. do the whole this is free publicity honestly, that could have been spun in your favor. Thank you. It's also, you could have ignored. This yeah. thing would have died down the second or third day. Yeah. Done. And, that's and you've moved on with your business. I, I, I think um, a lot of us react, first of all, emotionally, instead of looking at how you're going to turn something, to, to, in, in, to spin something in your favor, something like this. It is a PR catastrophe 
Tolu was spot on with that. But let, let's give you a context of what this, if this goes forward in legal filings, the uh, Nigeria police force alleges that Choma used her Facebook account to instigate people against the risk of foods. Uh, she was charged with instigating false information and conspiring against the company, which are punishable under Nigeria's Cybercrime Prohibition Act. Now, if Choma is found guilty, she could face up to three years in jail or a fine of seven million naira for a first charge and a seven-year sentence for the second charge. So, I mean, this is just going all the way. And something that could have just died naturally. We all review products. Some people review worse than she reviews, yeah. especially on X. So I, I still don't get the, the part where she's charged with conspiration, right? Yeah. Because the man said that she conspired. Now they're charging her. So if it's by that, that means they should charge the man for murder because she said he's killing people. He's with killing so have you so, proven either yeah. one? Have so he, they're taking his words, but but disregarding her. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, yes, she 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 said something online, but how did it? But this is the parts where also people are pointing out the power dynamic. So you've had the police arrest her, I think twice mm -hmm. as it is now. Yeah. The last one we heard about was when they laid siege to her home here yeah. in Lagos. This and woman who's pregnant, yeah. she has three kids, and she's pregnant with her fourth. You wanted to arrest her again because remember she was, I think, live streaming or live tweeting it. Her lawyer as well that they wanted to take her from Lagos to Abuja. Yeah, yeah, so you have the yeah. police involved, making it a criminal offense. Then you also have a civil lawsuit against her as well. And one of the complainants in the criminal offense is the police. And it's like, okay, what is the connection? Mm. How is the police the complainant in this case? Then when you also look at that, Nigeria's Cybercrime Prohibition Act has been accused of being intentionally obtuse so that the people who are in power can use yeah. it to actually stamp out dissent and stamp out people who, have, um, who are trying to yeah. use freedom of, uh, freedom of, um, of speech. speech yeah. So there are issues with the Nigerian Cybercrime Prevention Act that have now made this case really a rallying cry. And I do applaud the group of women, I think it was about two yeah, weeks ago, yeah, two and a half, three yeah, weeks ago, yeah. who did a rally in Lagos here. It's gotten a lot of attention. We've been covering it. I know it's one of the advocacies that was covered at a place at the table. Uh, trended for a while because ERAT really, really laid out the points of this particular case and what the issues were in the power mm. dynamics. But now this is hitting international press. We're talking CNN, Daily Mail, and it's all so being how? made to seem as if this company is a Goliath against Chilma, who is the David. And uh -huh. in all ways, it, the company simply ends up not looking good. This, again, could have been handled in so many different ways than where we find ourselves now. Yeah. I'm so sorry. But, but sadly, though, I've realized over time that public perception, international interference has nothing on Nigerians. They will do what they will do. Now people are calling for a boycott of all of his brands. Well, so how, how does that help? Now you know that now that because social media has become a global phenomenon. Absolutely. So you can use social media. It's like a marketplace. You sell your market. You, whatever it is you want to do on social media, whatever you put out there, it's amplified a, a million folds and a million times. So it's hit the international press. They're all over it. Now, how, do you, how are you going to fight that? If you're boycotting all your products, because not only tomato paste that they're into, yeah. if they say, okay, this, uh, listen, this is abuse of fundamental, you know, the big mm -hmm. Human rights, abuse fundamental, of power. Yeah, of abuse of power, because you're in a position where you think you can squeeze out whatever. It makes you look bad all way round. Even if you win this round, yeah, say, okay, you succeed in getting Chioma behind bars or so, or you, you, you cower or you, you buckle because mm. of international pressure, because... What can you do? I don't know why the management of this, this product, they didn't actually sit down to really bien réfléchir les shows avant que you decide to go to town on someone. Because it, it seems like now this is a personal, or it has a personal vendetta undertone. What in Choma do you maybe say you want to not carry her and throw her away with the bathwater? I'm going to be very honest, right? I feel like, I mean, he knows what a lot of average Nigerians know. When you have money, you have power. You have the final say. And, and, and to, say to be honest, that. this is me saying, like, again, this is how I see this playing out. Yes, there's a possibility that, you know, because now social media is backing Chioma, mm. she's going to, of course, you know, they're going to fight for her and all that. She's going to get her freedom. But this company is going to redeem itself. Whether you, you it's just, it's going to happen under G. You know, you won't know. You just <laughs> won't hear anything about it again. And everybody continues. Life continues. Whether it's CNN hears it, BBC hears it, what will happen will happen. Well, do we come back to that statement? So in her first post, she's criticizing the company. She's saying that, oh, this is her she's first time just, using it. Yes. But in subsequently answering, when you're not accusing somebody of having a product that kills people. It, yes, it's one thing to say, okay, this is, she's not 
a big influential person, I can ignore it and move on. Somebody can take that comment and look at him like, oh, this is the reason I'm not going to buy this next. So I think in terms of defending your brand, this was an attempt to defend. But there are many, many ways of defending. Yeah. This was the, an attempt to defend by going on the offensive, the extreme offensive. But there are other ways of defending. Again, I'm going to say, this is media. No news is bad news. Yeah, People yeah, have yeah. taken the worst stories and yeah. used it to oh, revamp yeah. their careers, yeah. launch their careers, uh, whatever it is. It was such an opportunity for you as a brand to get back into top tier, to become top of mind. You know, you're, you're taking on. You don't even need to take her on. Imagine if they took her on a tour of their facilities and said, you, you want to exactly. put your mind at ease. Exactly. This is what goes into our product. Turn like, there's so let, many to be honest, let's other say, ways. Let's even say you don't want to do anything in her favor, right? Let's say you want to, you know, attempt to answer. You can literally just ask online. Mm -hmm. Give us the data. Tell us how many people have died that yeah. you know from this product. And then it shuts her up automatically. But then you decided, ah, oh, no. Yeah, like that's, it's like using a sledgehammer to kill a fly, uh -huh. guys. Yes. No, so it's And cool. I don't know if you guys watched the documentary that uh, another news channel put together on this. And she, it was heartbreaking because right now, I guess she's pregnant. She has three other kids, she's young pregnant. kids. How can you? Um, and it's not to say pregnant women can't commit a crime, quote unquote. But yeah. you know, in this situation, we're not there yet. She has criminal charges. She's facing time in jail. She's facing $5 billion in damages because yeah. he's also brought a civil case. But what he said is, I would rather die than allow someone to tarnish my image. I worked 40 years to grow. And I'm thinking to myself, how far are you willing to take this, even if you're, the, if you're using your own hand to tarnish that image? How far? Is he willing to go with this? Is it worth it? And, and, and you know, so people are I, dying every day. Is it worth it? I, Do you know, what I mean? not from his product. Oh, that's no, not what you meant. No, that's not what I'm, I'm saying. But I'm like saying that we lose people's guys. We talked about it when we started the show. What are you gonna gain in the end? People, we lose people every day. People are just getting, they're just falling down like flies. Especially this year, we have ha we have heard many deaths that have shocked us. And you ask yourself. In the dead, they didn't take anything with them. They just moved. Now you're telling us that in 40 years, the reputation, the this. I'm sorry, I don't want to go deep into it because you know, in my mouth, when I go, I'm like an AK-47. Please, please, it's all right. <laughs> because, <laughs> and, and to be honest, um, Tolu did mention, when Tolu said pregnancy, I just tried to put it, uh, place it side, side by side. We just had, um, what's her name, uh, the tall lady who was assaulted by a pregnant woman and her yes, okay, so, okay, so. And the constitution was like, no, we can't charge her, we can't arrest her, we let her go. But this one is pregnant. Someone else is sitting on it because he has power, he has influence, and then you don't care that she's pregnant. It's, it's like, like no the pregnancy is not just... We will be right back after this quick break. When we come back, a woman leader in Kaduna has found herself without a position because she spoke out. So today, of conversation is about speaking out. Stay with us. And this is why crisis management is important, and it's no joke. Now, moving on to, I don't know if this is a crisis, it's just a conversation at this point. The Cardona State chapter of the APC has suspended its women leader, Maryam Suleiman, after she criticized Governor Ubasani for the state's debt inherited from the previous administration, which was led by Nasser El Rufai. Sani, during a town hall meeting, expressed concern over the debt, saying it left the state with insufficient funds to pay salaries. In response, Suleiman posted a viral video on social media accusing Sani of mismanagement and advising him against blaming his failures on El Rufai. This led to her swift suspension from office pending further investigation by the party leadership. Wow, wow, woo! I, 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 is, the, is the swift? Is the swift? Here we go again. Swift, as in it, 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 up, as soon as possible, Ooh, as soon as yesterday. Now, Ooh. why would the party take such drastic actions? So they, they, one, one they, his, if you can his, see this, they have accused members. her of defamation of character oh of His Excellency, God. the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, unauthorized publicity of the party disputes that discredited the personality of the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. And furthermore, from yesterday, which was March 31st, the leadership of APC uh, has unanimously resolved to suspend Haji Maryam Suleiman from the party pending further investigation on the matter from the constituted authority. Let me tell you guys, in a way I understand, you are a representative of the party. If you are in disagreement with what is going on with the party, that disagreement is meant to be had internally. Okay. This is still the same party yeah. from El Rufai to Sunny now. Yeah. Whatever comments you have, whatever disagreements you have with the ruling governor now, it shouldn't be coming out to the fore. That oh. is a restriction you take on in the position you've taken on. 
But then again, right, mm -hmm. a lot of times we hear these disputes happening, but nothing is done about it. There are no, there's no guarantee that someone speaks up and then that, that thing is actually addressed. At the end of the day, they would point it back at you. So obviously, there's a possibility that, you know, a lot of times people now come out on social media. I mean, see the one that happened the last time. People come out on social media and then try to somehow put it out there as evidence yeah. because okay fine i've spoken or i've said mm -hmm. this inside nobody mm -hmm. did anything mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. let the whole world know yes i get the point of you know you're a representative that's what yeah. you signed up yeah. for but if nothing has been done in internally internally yeah. then you know it, it it goes out and what what surprises me the most is how they're so quick it's like yeah. they have a list of <laughs> you suspensions know, just that, yeah there's <laughs> like you 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 been waiting this fly has been disturbing you see so your your hand is up with the when boom. you when they just see i want to say suspend 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 I swear, fast, honest, fast. honestly no guys seriously i i hear what tulu says when he says when she says um it it, it could be hard internally yeah it could be hard internally but like blessing said also Maybe the woman has seen that this internally is just using the cover of pot to cover the pot. But this, no, I understand what you're saying, but this is not the situation here. So the governor is saying that he's being hampered from managing the state because his predecessor mismanaged the state, because put the state into debt. Let me, so now, you're, are you blaming me for the debt? Are you, the situation I find at hand is one I can't manage because the state was put into debt by my predecessor. She's saying, no, don't go and blame your predecessor. But maybe it is she's your saying mismanagement. No. Maybe she's saying so okay, based so, on information which she don't get. So, I'm not saying it, it, this is what happened. I'm saying maybe she would have seen that. Mm -mm, don't really blame it on the outgoing, outgone so, government. My, my, my there was, is, in, there was money is, enough for things to be sorted out. But you didn't perhaps, do it. bam. So my thing is, how about we take reverse action? Because mm -hmm. I've seen the, the pro progression most of the time. Someone accuses maybe the government or the Senate, what, whichever case now, of doing something. Instead of you to investigate and then get back and said, ah, you were wrong, go, yeah. and you have to suffer the, the yeah, consequence, yeah, yeah, yeah. which nobody will fault you for. You just first then you all, go ahead yeah. and just hit the nail on the head. Then you're now under, you're not put pending for that investigation <laughs> that we never hear about again. That investigation is just on paper. That's it, on paper. That line, yeah. that's all. So paper. how about you so investigate? You know the one that don't bust my brain? It's when the chairman sign and the secretary sign. As no, is that for that no. investigation that burst no. my own brain? That I pending investigation that was supposed to have happened before you, you took the action. Hey, wait, she's not a whistleblower. It's, it's not like she's not like she's letting that out information that is of state yeah. She's not a whistleblower. So I'm like, I'm looking at the two of you like, wait, I hire somebody. You are carrying my banner. You are supposed to be working for me. It's not that I'm doing anything bad. You we just have a disagreement on why the state <laughs> is going the direction the state is going. And then you want to come and say no outside in public that it is my fault. No. Uh, when you are under my administration. Uh, come. Eh? Like we said, maybe she had said it with, uh, not outside. What's the opposite just of Just because you said, said it, it I don't, just because you said it doesn't mean it's true. Well, but let's not also lie. It's possible that she didn't say it. And then she just said that the trend is when someone speaks up, <laughs> they come for you. And then the people are like, no, justice for you. know. So you just want to take that opportunity. Just because she said it doesn't mean it's true. No. Exactly. So there's uh, there's also that. Let's I be feel there's a story behind it. So I always feel so. There's a bigger picture there at play. They have been holding this uh, broom up for her since that yeah. is, you want to you now use the hammer. It's, 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 it's very possible that they're 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 down because that's people. swift, swiftly suspending her. Let's not lie. It's very. It's just like no? okay, fine. Ends has happened, yeah. and then after that, every yaw boy <laughs> saying they are profiling me. When you know that you're yeah, yaw boy, <laughs> just because everybody is oh, ends has end police brutality. So, so, anyway, <laughs> so people are also saying is this about freedom of speech because freedom of speech is a fundamental right, and political parties of all people should actually encourage healthy debate and dialogue, not silence dissenting voices. But what was it? Hey, I can't believe I'm about to say this. It's they said it's freedom of speech, but there's no guarantee of freedom after, after the, speech. the speech. We will not quote who said it. <laughs> anyway, there's also power dynamics at play. Maybe. Is Maybe. this a case of women in politics facing greater scrutiny? Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's a public holiday. <laughs> facing greater scrutiny and backlash for speaking out compared to their male counterparts. That one says this. Yeah, nah, but men well, have been suspended for it, but not. I don't. Not, I don't. Think not this is the case. <laughs> no, I don't think this is the case. I don't think this is the case because just recently we saw someone suspended very swiftly. In fact, <laughs> it was suspended a day before he did what he did. <laughs> Guys, so oh, this is where we draw the curtain to a close on uh, on Jasiri for today. We've had a fantastic show. Uh, we thank you all for tuning in. See you guys tomorrow and enjoy the holiday. From all of us here on Jasiri. Bonsoir!
even I did not believe that by the game. It was so fake. It was literally we it the try. fakest goodbye no, that I have heard. We, we have to, we have to try. How can, I, how can it be a, a whole April 1st? And we will not try Anybody something that believe yes. that. Yeah. And, no, apart from that, uh, they, we have people who would have believed it. When I have not told them my cop about my comedy career. <laughs> What do you mean? I, I always end with my comedy no, career. No, you know, so. besides, uh, usually when we start the show, it's usually when we start the show that people would expect, okay, if there's an April Fool thing, a lightning yeah. will happen. They didn't but see that we're just smoothly going. Yeah, going. We, we, we continue our business. <laughs> Anybody that thinks they can predict Jassiri, now nah, they, nah, they don't man. know the show. Nah. All right, so if you are watching, don't forget to use the hashtag Jassiri to be part of the conversation. We are at New Central TV on all of our social media platforms. This story is not our story, but we've inserted ourselves into the story. Yes. Because how would you feel if your funeral was being planned right before your very eyes. Well, that is exactly what happens because, as they say, heavy lies the head that wears the crown. And in this story, it's actually very literal. The heavy head belongs to none other than King Charles III. Now, over the weekend, reports emerged that the health of the British monarch has taken a dire turn as insiders now claim that he is battling pancreatic cancer with a prognosis of just two years to live. As his health deteriorates, even though you see him here, this is over the weekend, Saturday, not Saturday, Sunday, greeting well wishers outside the palace. Uh, we've seen Operation Menai Bridge allegedly being put into place. Now, this includes protocols for moving his body from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall, where he will lie in state before his official funeral nine days later. A man's funeral planned right before his very eyes. Wow. And you know what? I think what's even bigger for me is Charles was king and waiting for such a long time. And I remember reading about a lot of the monarchies that are still very present in Europe and everything. Many of them had abdicated for their successors. Mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth was one of the very yeah. last, if she was not the only one, who had chosen not to abdicate and hand over to Charles. Yeah. You've now been king for just around 18 months and it's like you may only be king so that much further. And it's just like this man was King and waiting for so for a long time. many years. So, yeah. he, 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 I, well, so I, I won't lie. I think that um, that's one thing that, con well, I'm not from a royal family. I'm from a family, I'm from the bloodline of Jesus. So <laughs> I think I can relate to that royalty. But um, in all sincerity, I think that's one thing that comes with, you know, being from a royal family. There's just something that conditions your mind. I would, don't be surprised that King Charles still has that mentality of king in waiting because he has prepared for it his whole life. Whether or not the opportunity comes, and I think that same thing happened with the Queen as well. Mm -hmm. You know, she assumed power when she was quite young. young and yeah. even while she was alive, um, plans for a funeral were also ongoing. In fact, don't be surprised, she also <laughs> said some things, or do this, do that. Yes, so yes. that's one thing that comes with, with you know, royalty. With, yeah, with royalty. You probably would have known that, I mean, you might even just be king for one day. So plans would have been put in place before your very eyes. It's very devastating, but I think that is something that they are used to. You know, yeah. there's just this they're, thing they're that comes, been, that yeah. duty, you yeah, have to do this, everybody thing. has to do it. A, it's a heavy burden that they carry. I think, uh, number one, his mother was quite stubborn. The, queen, the late queen was mm. quite stubborn. And I, my mother didn't know in Peking. Maybe I the was woman knew that. The woman knew that, huh? This one. Uh -huh. I prefer to give it to Willy Willy. Ah, but even yeah. he has his own case right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, hey. at the same yeah. time, wow. you know, the mother would say, I prefer to give it to my grandson that my son. This one, I know him. Uh, this one, I yeah. know him. But people may not have understood that. And... You, you see that burden that they, I cannot, I'm so sorry, it's not in my, t in my, my, my nature. I don't have the grace, it's not my destiny. So perhaps, a, a, and I'm, please guys, don't take it seriously. I'm just saying that, you know, um, you know how on your headstone, yeah. you, you just, you know, you're king in weight. Oh. I'm just, you know. Ah, you're horrible. Well, but you know what, let, let's, let's personalize this because I know different people who have said even before i die even they're not there's nothing wrong with them there's nothing but they have very very specific plans for their funeral yes, so. yeah. they have people they say yeah. if you invite this person i will, I will wake yeah. up you <laughs> i will wake up and yeah. haunt you i want this I white Mandela's, flower Mandela's i want this person to speak mm. so Mandela's it's not daughter. yes there's royalty of course because his whole thing is going to be heads of state security very official yeah. but there are people who ordinary people who say this is what i want and this is what i don't want and if you don't do what i want mm -hmm. me and you you will not you, sleep again but, what this is said is so <laughs> correct because they have been groomed all their lives. Yeah. And for perhaps um, King Charles, it may be... Um, Say it in French. Uh, yes, <laughs> it may be quelque chose de normal. Just it may be something normal, normal mm -hmm. for him that... <laughs> Yeah, like that, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, I think the purple roses, when I, that casket with me, it's like, it should be here. The purple roses, put it here. I think it's people, normal people like us who would look at yeah. it like, what the hell? 
Yeah. The thing is, you know, they don't have a lot of control. So if he wants anything small or private or some mm. specific person to say something, a lot of it is not in his control. It may have yeah. to be a separate ceremony with just family because you have to consider the heads of state. Yeah. Pe different people have to have sincere arrangements. It's only a certain uh, uh, person, or I think the Archbishop of Canterbury, that can speak. You know, all those kind of things. Yeah. But what you think I've said, I want to be cremated. I've told my husband, if you do not cremate me, I, I don't want you. to be in the ground. I, I want to be cremated. In, in fact, I've seen places where they can turn your ashes into like a necklace or a stone or something like a, uh, um, what do you call it, yeah. a table or something. I'm wear like, me. You want to wear me. Give yeah, that to God. There, there was, there was a movie ashes. where a guy um, wanted coffee and then he mistakenly made his father. That's why I'm not going to be in a canister. <laughs> Make me into like a, 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 Make, a melted glass stone yeah, or that, something. Really, that's a conversation to be had. Really? Another time, because yeah. I've always said I, I prefer being cremated. Don't, I want to be and, and please don't and, and I'm crazy in Nigeria. Yeah. I move, we go. Let's keep it moving. My Let's spirit and my soul are mm. not, they're not tangible things. Yeah. My body does not hold my spirit and my soul down after the passing. Yeah. Please let me go into so, my ass. So, please spread me into the, <laughs> no, not the lagoon. So, so please, don't let me go into So let me go into blue water. Two things here. For, um, for what Catherine said, right, that thing about being uh, conditioned. When Man. the queen died, I read about the guy that went to put that thing on the gate. Yeah. That's what he was trained for all his life. Yeah. For when the queen dies. Like, it's, it's that rigid. Like, all you need to do, just be living in the palace, eating and drinking. When the queen dies, you do that. That's your duty. You know, there's that. And then I feel like for this part we're talking about, mm. you know, it, it goes beyond royalty, like Tolu said. I think that everybody has it. Because why do we have wills? Why do you write a will? Mm. Even if we're not planning to die. We know that. I mean, we're, we're human, right? They say dust you are and dust you shall return. You know, so everybody has that part of them where mm. it's only the older people that are confident enough to talk about it because mm. you know that. I mean, I, I was at an event and this 96-year-old man was saying, now I'm well, I'm moving closer mm. to my grave. And everyone was like, no, don't say that. Well, he knows. Oh, he um, knows. It's the truth. Every, almost, every time I go home, like, my father said, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Oh, we're looking at this man. What's going on? He said, I'm ready. I've done everything. Yeah. At this point, if he takes me, I'm ready. I'm a walk all day. We know. I think we, we just know, don't want to hear. Yeah. 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 And I, as I just said this, it also makes me remember something I saw recently, that nobody really talks to you about the about your parents aging yes. and no. the closer they move to death. Oh my God. You know, yeah. seeing your parents go from these viral, influential mm -hmm. figures in your life to then sort of frail, they're almost like children. And yeah. I asked before, yeah. I don't know who's more stubborn. Yes. Older people are oh, toddlers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Old people, your parents at their old age are very, very oh, stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. You see, see that I'm speaking from this, experience. Uh, they say, well, yeah. well, your, your parents' responsibility is to parent you while you're young, then you parent them when they're old. But anyways, let's, let's, let's move on. Now, over the weekend, Nigerian airline Air Peace made its first touchdown at Gatley Airport in the United Kingdom after months of deliberation and negotiations. Now, this marks the beginning of a new era in international travel and opens the opportunity for healthy competition and competitive ticket pricing. While many are jubilating, some Nigerians, of course, of course, have taken to the X platform criticizing the airline for dressing their air hostesses in typical Igbo attire known as Isiagu turning what should be a national achievement to a tribal dress down. Oh, God. Ladies. Why, why are we like this, really? Well, no, this is gorgeous. Is this not absolutely beautiful? Be. This is yeah. so Is this a national carrier? No, it is not a national carrier. Is it your airline? I don't not, know. And when he was busy <laughs> donating God. his planes and flying Nigerians from Libya, doing uh, those returnees, uh, immigration yeah. returnees and migrant returnees and doing Sudan, yeah, nobody remembered them, no. We, we, we are a very incredible people. Uh, where you, you, you least expect us to react, you will see us you in live and direct. That's why our bones, they go out yeah. lay. We'll it be. takes one person to start Thank the you. trend I was going to say that. X. I was going to say Everybody that. Everybody else hops on it. Suddenly, why are we so sensitive to tribal and cultural expression? I don't understand. We are flying Gatwick. It, it's the first time. It's, a, 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 a pure, it's, it's when the average Nigerian say, ah, we are going to get with their father. <laughs> that is it. I, I no. honestly, I don't. Is there anything? There's I don't even. It's, wrong. This is not a government no. airline. It is one. It's not your airline. It's, it's just like saying, no. why are we? Why did we call Legusi Legusi? Why are we calling Fufu? <laughs> no, or not the Akoyo restaurant or whatever. Yeah. Like if I have 
something. I would want to. I'm I'm proud of where I come from. So even if I name it, even if it's not Epis, let's and say it's Isiago Airlines. Airline. It is not, not your business. business. If it takes <laughs> you to where you're going, Sister, if, it's on time, time. if they don't dress you in the Isiago attire when you enter, <laughs> See, I, I would love it. Let me be honest. I would yeah. love it if you yeah. rotated yeah. dressing, but I'm not offended. Yeah, I'm not I'm offended. Not offended. Why would you it doesn't. Be offended? Uh, it, it, it's we're taking away, we're being petty anti for what is something that many of us should be very, very happy for, especially with the cost of airfare. Yes. Like, I'm planning holiday. Holiday is not planning me. On air, please, that I, is, I would like, that Nigerians, Nigerians are one of the most liberal set of people that I know because go to Dubai and ask why people wear abayas or why uh, uh, some women cover their air, their hair in, uh -huh. in some places. You can't. It's only no, here that you no complain about way. one person's airline <laughs> giving you issues because they're dressing like, I don't I don't get it. No, I, I like what they're wearing. It's beautiful. Congratulations exactly. to them, to Nigerians as well. Yeah. We hope it keeps up. I would have loved to see a rotation, but he doesn't owe me anything. Exactly. He doesn't owe anybody anything. You he's know? doing his business as a businessman, and he's entitled to make those choices. Yes. And you know that uh, we'll take reactions in, in a bit, and everyone who's talking will still fly them now. Yeah, yeah. If do they have wants to ever. represent what they call is it Wazobia culture? Maybe this week they are wearing Yoruba attire. Yeah, that, that's his business, yeah. right? Maybe someone would advise him do that, let people see. But you you have no right. At this point, I don't even them. think he needs to do it because if he does it, it'll be like so we won't be happy. Yes. Yes. Even, even if there were plans to do it, yes. if he now does it, it'll not be like oh, see, yeah. they're lazy. Exactly. At this point, if I don't do month for the next month, don't. <laughs> if you have those plans, keep it yes. for the next one month. <laughs> okay, so let's take reactions to this. Ah, the ex community guard. I think X is on a different, the reactions people on X are on a different P. Uh -huh. No nonsense. And Someone. Then, <laughs> an airline that's supposed to be for Nigeria, as the claim is having their air hostesses wear Isiagu, Igbo traditional attire, because their CEO is an Igbo man. But if another tribe tries this, they are the ones who will be quick to call them tribalists. Are you kidding? Just, I, I don't understand. Okay, as a Yoruba man, the people complaining have serious problems in the innermost parts of their brains. <laughs> it is a private-owned airline. Thank I'm you. helping him correct. I'm so sorry. He's an evil man. He has every right for his organization to reflect his culture and identity. It is also beautiful, commendable to see. If he paying you, go ahead, My open God. airline. Thank Thank you. Buy Babariga or Astro okay for your staff and Shara. Bah. Or instead, tell your federal government to create an air, air in Nigeria and so, so plan for them to That part I can very, very I'm well. feeling you. Why are they so paid? Is Igbo not part of Nigeria? This is a very commendable job because he is promoting our attire for God's sake. It might be the Isagu today and Dashiki tomorrow. Like, why do you people have to form negative exactly. opinion about every damn thing all the time? She should have ended that with a question mark. But anyway, this is a private owned airline. Exclamation. WTH is wrong with you people. Something is laudable you're crying about tribe. Isn't Isagu? Isagu. Yeah. Isn't it a Nigerian attire? Do you know what? Do you know what I think? I, I think know. that if this, if there was no, let's say, if the air hostesses were not wearing this attire, a conversation would have sprung up sometime soon. That why are they dressing like the British? Why are they not trying to portray their culture? Even if it's to wear the Igbo attire, yeah. I know yes. that this same ex would yes. have brought up that conversation yes. that they are yeah. not trying to, you know, uh, what uh, they, are they are being too it? European. Yes. they are being too um, Western. What do you want? I don't know. We ourselves self, we don't even know what we want, and that's a given. Take it to the bank. Today we are singing alto. Tomorrow we're singing treble. Next time we're going to be singing tenor. No, seriously. Guys, if, if, if it is something that uh, interests you, for you know, what we talk about here on Just If it's something that interests you or something that, please feel free to leave comments on all our social media platforms. <laughs> Okay, so one comment, <laughs> so sorry, Catherine, one comment that did not make it onto our reactions uh, came from at Olawumi PK, Airpiece is owned by an evil man, yes. However, check the organization. Can't you see that your brothers and your sisters work there? This tribal bigotry is sick. Are you this blind? Why are you worried people put on Isiago? Is it not Nigerian attire? And it goes on to look at the people in product engineering. There's an Adebayo Ayola, there's a Tolu... Uh, to me, to, uh, sorry, Tolu Milade Shogbeshan, there's a Bumi Akano, uh, uh, Inwaka Okweri, there's uh, Aleru Adekunle, that sounded like my surname. <laughs> there are so many people. Definitely, yeah. it's not just an evil company at the end of the day. No. But at the end of the day, this is what it is. We are happy. We hope to see um, the impact of this reflected for Nigerians, every Nigerian. If you like, don't buy tickets. 
because and they do not wear your they, they do not that. wear your tribal no. can it come? They will still buy tickets. At the end, there's money that will speak. There's money that will speak. At the end, we are always like that. We it's almost as if we are double standarded, or we speak from both sides of our mouth, and that can be exhausting. So I think you just choose your battles on X. Everything you can imagine is on X. You just choose. It's like going for a buffet. There's everything there. But it's, really, it's really ironic that air peace is causing war. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nigerians wake up and they chose violence. I'm telling Meanwhile, you, air peace. You go air abuse peace. the most peace. They did not call it air wazobia. If, oh. if you are paying, go and do your water air peace or water peace, wazobia peace, or something. Peace. Please, the Lord is risen. He has risen. Embrace peace. You can take us out. I'm not in the mood. Embrace. But we, can't, uh, let me ask, no, are, are we really going? This time? Uh, yeah, we will leave you this me. time, please. Me, I'm are you sure? When yes. they don't see us, they will know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so this is all we can uh, we, we have on our table for you today. Remember, always embrace your culture. Don't be shy. Embrace it. Whether you are from the zoo, you are from the bush, embrace it. Embrace your culture, your heritage. No matter where life takes you, find your joy in the little moments, guys. Please do that. Hope you enjoyed your Easter meal uh, from our table for today. My name is Katrin, and this is Blessings, Vals Tolu, and we are heading out of there. See you tomorrow. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. This time is for real. <laughs>